This is another honey extracting tank that I modified. This one originally had a motor, and the motor looked like this, kind of a washing machine type motor, and it had belts and pulleys and all kinds of stuff that would rip your fingers off if you weren't paying attention. So uh, the guy who owns this gave me this motor, is wondering if I can put it on. It's a gearhead motor. So the shaft is going down. And what I did was I installed this shaft coupling. These are pretty common. You can get them on eBay for $10, $12. And the nice thing about them, you can buy them in any combination of shaft sizes. So the <clears throat> basket shaft is uh, 5 8 and the shaft coming off the motor I believe was uh, 3 8 or maybe even 10 millimeters. The only thing that I really don't like about this setup is this motor has it doesn't freewheel because of the gearing so you have to be very careful how you turn it on because it just kind of jerks to a start. So there's an on off, on off switch on the side of the motor. You can hear it growling. And then we'll try and see if we can get it started. So it spins up pretty fast, so once you get it going, you gotta back off the speed a little. Honey extractors take almost no torque to run. Once they get up to speed, they just kind of lope along. The other problem is when you shut it off, if you just turn off the switch, the basket will try and turn the motor and it can't do that through that gear shaft. So it'll end up slipping on the shaft coupling. So you got to be very careful if you turn it off. See how it kind of jerked to a stop? Turn the motor off. So I deliberately did not put any flats on either the basket shaft or the motor shaft. So it's just on there squeezing. So if there's a problem, you know, if you stop it too quick, it'll just spin on the coupling and won't uh, screw up the gears here. The other thing I like to point out is um, this is a piece of stainless steel and I welded it to the top because uh, this is just real flimsy stainless steel to support this motor. Um, there, I just put a couple tack welds to hold this steel plate in place. But this pattern on here, uh, I'll show in another video how I did it, but it's called spotting. It looks like what was on the Spirit of, uh, the Spirit of St. Louis, the nose cow of that plane. And it's really easy to do, only takes, took maybe a minute to do this whole plate. So I'll show that in another video.